Hi everyone, I'm Tariq Hussain, author of Minarets in the Mountains, A Journey into Muslim Europe, which was launched at Stanford's exactly a year ago this month. So to celebrate my book birthday, I'm going to read you a segment from the introduction of the book, which really brings home the journey that I took in order to write it. An Ottoman city, Sarajevo. It was the melodious cry of the muezzin that hastened me towards my first destination in Sarajevo. The sacred words inviting Muslims to prayer cascaded through the valley where Bosnia and Herzegovina's capital city nestles. Squeezed along a narrow east-west corridor on the banks of the Miljaka River as it emerges serpentine from the surrounding mountains, old Sarajevo still resembles a bustling medieval city. All around me were narrow alleyways leading to historic quarters, once the exclusive domain of metal workers, leather markets, gold dealers and coffee sellers. Some were still home to their modern incarnations, jostling for room with the new alfresco restaurants, cafes and boutique tourist shops. The late evening Adhan is always quite enchanting. An inky darkness enveloped the green hills as the serene Arabic words rippled through the valley. One by one, the mosques came alive. Every time a new one joined the growing chorus, I turned my head to notice another tall, historic minaret I hadn't seen before. They seemed to be everywhere, each an ancient testimony that Sarajevo has always been a Muslim city. Founded in 1461, just two years before Bosnia officially became an Ottoman Sanyak, Sarajevo's establishment effectively confirmed Bosnia as a Muslim land, and it has remained proudly so ever since. Growing up, I didn't know there were cities in Europe where the Adhan could be such a normal part of the landscape. I certainly wouldn't have imagined that such a city lay just a thousand miles to the east and wasn't called Cairo or Istanbul. Like most children in the 1990s, the first time I heard the name Sarajevo, it was from the mouth of a middle-aged white man with a received pronunciation accent sitting behind a news desk on the TV. Whenever he mentioned Sarajevo, the TV would cut to grainy images of men, women and children running for cover amid flashes of bright light and the most awfully violent noises. These scenes of utter terror and destruction were no different to the ones I saw every time the same man said Baghdad or Mogadishu. Sarajevo then was a place of war somewhere far, far away. Maybe even near Baghdad and Mogadishu. No, that much I did know. I was distinctly aware that both Iraq and Somalia were Muslim countries and the people there looked like me. Furthermore, my parents and the mosque elders regularly expressed their sadness for the suffering Iraqi and Somali Muslims. They even dedicated prayers to them, but I don't recall any prayers ever being dedicated to the Bosnians in Sarajevo. I entered the large stone courtyard of the Ghazi Huzre Beg Mosque and headed straight for the entrance to the main hall. I could hear verses of the Quran being recited over the Tannoy system. This told me I was late for the congregational session. Rushing past the ornate outdoor fountain, I kicked off my shoes, threw them onto the wooden shoe rack and burst through the large doors, expecting to be greeted by a neat row of worshippers. But there was no row. In fact, everyone in the half-empty hall looked very relaxed. A few were finishing off sunnah prayers alone. Others were still reading the Qurans in their hands. One or two elders were trying not to doze off. Did I really hear verses from the Qur'an? The voice started up again. I immediately recognised Surah Al-Ikhlas. It was a deep, elderly voice, but I couldn't see where it was coming from. There was no imam at the front, only the colourful and elaborate marble mihrab. I was momentarily confused. This was not how prayer normally started, but it did here in Bosnia. Like the stunning mosque I stood in, 
Bosnia's Islamic practice is also inspired by Turkey, where it is common to recite certain important chapters of the Quran ahead of the congregational prayer. As this all began to dawn on me, I realised that much to my relief, I hadn't missed the prayer after all. I would get to start my search for Muslim Europe just as I had envisioned it, bowing down to God beside Europe's indigenous Muslims. Thank you so much for listening.